the United States is not the only country rumored to have collected alien remains from the crash site of a UFO. In an incident that people are calling the Brazilian Roswell, as many as six extraterrestrials were said to have been encountered and or captured in 1996 following a massive number of UFO sightings in Brazil. This is the true story of the incident at Virginia. On January 20th, the Brazilian town of Virginia was the center of a flood of UFO sightings, which started with a report from a local farmer and his wife. Eureka and Arlena de Freitas were rudely awakened at one o'clock in the morning by the sound of their frightened cows. Arlena looked out the window to see their cattle stampeding in response to a UFO moving above the pasture. It was gray and venting smoke. Her husband Eureka saw it as well. He says it was the size of a bus, and it continued to descend until it hovered only five feet above the field. They watched it for nearly half an hour until it flew away. Brazilian radar detected as many as 40 unidentified objects over the heart of the country, some of which were captured on video by the public. When one of them crashed landed in the woods, it started a blaze, which became the responsibility of the Virginia Fire Department. When they arrived on site, the firemen were surprised to find military personnel already there. The sound of gunshots was followed by soldiers emerging from the woods. They bore two large bags of which one held something still moving. The bags were loaded onto a military truck. That afternoon, two teenage girls, Liliana and Val da Silva, were walking home with another young woman, Katya Xavier, a family friend who just got out of work. They took a shortcut through a part of town which was uninhabited rubble. When the girl saw a creature huddled against a brick wall, Katya screamed. They said it had red eyes and brown skin, which was glistening as if oiled. It had visibly raised veins on its arms, and on its head were three horns. It looked like it was suffering, and when the girls ran, it did not follow. Liliana told her mother she had seen the devil. Katya and the mother of the young girls returned immediately to the brick wall. They found nothing except for a lingering smell of ammonia, an odor they found so strong that it brought tears to their eyes. After running in front of a patrol car, one of the extraterrestrials was said to have been captured by a policeman using his bare hands. The policeman's name was Marco Cherise. He was 23 years old and in excellent physical shape. He put the creature in the back seat of the car. Its breathing, which was labored, sounded like the buzzing of a beehive. Marco drove to a health clinic, seeking medical help for the injured creature. The clinic turned him away, but the city hospital did not. According to eyewitnesses at the hospital, the unworldly being could not be saved by doctors in the emergency room. The following month in the city zoo, one of the alien creatures was seen lurking. This preceded great misfortune at the zoo, 
when several animals got sick. A deer, a llama, and an ocelot came down with the same symptoms, as if they were all exposed to the same pathogen, even though they were different species living in widely separated habitats. The Brazilian authorities were said to have been warned about the UFOs by the United States government because NORAD was tracking their entry over Brazil. After the incident, alien bodies were allegedly flown to the U.S. aboard an unmarked transport plane. Marco Chiriz, the policeman who came into direct contact with the skin of one of the extraterrestrials, also fell ill. His doctors could not agree on a diagnosis. The illness would not respond to antibiotics. Medical testing returned the result that 8% of his blood consisted of unknown toxic substances. As I do not believe in original sin. However, I have been corrupted by life and my circumstance, by my own foolishness. These things trouble me the most. I want to be pure, but I fall so short. Corrosion. Rust, death, and failure haunt my every breath and step, and yet I live and write. While corrosion lights, it shows there's some strength in me. Possibly, maybe, decidedly. I will persist, persist, persist.